Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer DIY upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start troubleshooting a gateway computer if it's not turning on, uh, no power, if it appears dead, or if there's very little signs of life, possibly just some LEDs and lights lighting up. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer, but if you do need to leave me a question or comment, please feel free to. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's get into the project. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to have you do guys, press on and hold your power button for up to a minute. Sometimes that will jog your computer out of whatever's happening and your computer may actually start. That should help about 10-15% of you honestly to start your computer. If pressing and holding the power button does not get your computer to start, then we're going to try something else. We're going to try a power drain procedure on your motherboard. Sometimes power can build up in various parts of a motherboard, specifically your capacitors, and that can stop the computer from functioning well and turning on, so we're gonna drain those. So we're gonna do that by unplugging your charger. We're then gonna flip the computer over and we're gonna remove your battery. Now, many of you with older computers will have a removable battery, an easily removable battery, where you just press on a couple clips and your battery slides out. If that's you, awesome, you're lucky. Um, if those of you have a newer computer like this one with no easily removable battery, you're gonna have to remove your bottom case to get at your battery. Now, because all computers are different, um, the odds that you have this exact same model are pretty low. If you guys need help accessing an internal battery, there'll be a video link above. I'll also have it below in the description on a tutorial how to get into this computer on a run-of-the-mill gateway and access your battery. If that doesn't help you and you need more specific instructions for your exact model, leave me a message. Let me know that you're trying to access your internal battery and, and you're looking for specific steps and then leave me your make and model and I can help you get into it. But after unplugging your charger and after removing your battery, we're gonna press and hold on the power button for one minute. After doing that, we're going to just replace one of them and leave the other out. So it's up to you which one, but I like starting with the charger. So then put the charger back in, but leave the battery out and try turning your computer on. If this works, you know that most likely you just needed a power drain or maybe the battery's bad. So keep an eye on it. If you have to do this repeatedly with the same result, I would change your battery. If this doesn't help you, then we're gonna repeat the process. Unplug your charger, your battery's already out. Press and hold the power button for a minute again to release that power again. And then after you've done it for a minute, leave the charger out, put your battery back in, and then try to start your computer again. If that works, then same thing as before, just in reverse. Keep an eye on it. You either just needed a power drain or you know your charger's bad. If you have to do this repeatedly with the same outcome, then look at replacing your charger. If you guys need any help with any tools or supplies or replacement parts, please check out the link above, also below in the description, and that can help you out with those. Last thing I'll shout out for this procedure is some of you may have to do this repeatedly to fully drain your power. So if you go through this process once, it doesn't appear to be the charger or the battery, don't give up, try it two or three times. Some of you may need to do that to fully drain your power. One thing I did wanna shout out guys about this power drain procedure, if it happens every once in a while to a computer, that's fine. It's kind of an unfortunate, normal thing with some electronics. However, if you find you have to do this every time you need to start your computer, there's a problem. Uh, the first thing I would suggest, make sure you're using your computer plugged into a surge protector and a healthy one, not a super old one that's not working. Uh, don't plug your computer directly into the wall all the time. The surge protector will protect it from any bad power coming through. Also, make sure your computer is not always plugged in and charging. A battery to stay healthy needs to regularly discharge and charge. If your computer's always plugged in and your battery's never getting that workout, the battery's gonna go bad and may start affecting your computer like this. If you have checked both those off your list and your computer still needs this every time you start your computer, there'll be a video link below in the description showing you how to test your charger to make sure it's good. At that point, you may wanna consider replacing your charger or your battery. 
Next test I have you run in this video is gonna involve your RAM. And just like your battery, some of you may be able to easily access your RAM through one of those quick panels. If not, again, leave me your brand and your model and I can help you get inside your specific computer to access your RAM if it's not easy. So most of you will see something like this. You'll have two RAM ports, some may only have one. Um, basically what we're going to do here guys is test for either a bad stick of RAM, a loose stick of RAM, or even a bad port. So the first thing you want to do is take both of your RAM sticks out, give the RAM ports a good blow, blow on them, um, make sure it's clean, and put your RAM sticks back in, try starting your computer. The way that RAM sticks usually set in, there are two metal arms on either side, they're held together by springs. So when you push those metal arms away, the RAM will release, like that. And then you just slide the RAM out. It's got a long port, short port, um, that's how it goes in there. You can't put it in uh, backwards, it has to go in the right way. So that's how you take your RAM out. Again, take both your RAM out, put them back in, try starting your computer. If your computer starts, it could have just been loose, it, it happens. Um, if your computer doesn't start, we're, we're going to test for each RAM stick now. So take one of your RAM sticks, put it into one of the ports, snap it in correctly, make sure that it's secure, try turning on your computer. If your computer works, you've identified the other RAM stick as bad. If your computer doesn't work, we're going to switch ports. We're going to take it out, put it in this port, try starting your computer. If your computer does not start, then we'll take this RAM stick out and then put your second RAM stick. Again, I, I only had one, but you'd want your second RAM stick. Try that in both ports, see if it works. Try turning it on in, in both ports. If you only have one stick like I do, um, you can try just reseeding it. You can try unplugging it, plugging it back, trying the computer, and then moving it from one port to the next. That, that can test for that but you need another good stick to test it if, if this is good. If this RAM's bad, you won't know. Um, you need a, another stick of RAM. For those of you who find out it's your RAM, no big deal. RAM's not one of the most expensive parts of a computer. However, it is a big factor in the speed of your computer. So if you do have to replace your RAM, may as well upgrade. There'll be a video link below in the description showing you how you can find compatible RAM. You can also leave me a message if you have any questions. The third and last test I'll show in this video is how to perform a manual BIOS reset on your computer by temporarily removing your CMOS battery from your motherboard. I'll show you that now. So this is your CMOS battery. It's a little round component here. It looks like a watch battery inside. It's wrapped in black electrical tape and it plugs into a port. Another common CMOS battery presentation is on this motherboard here. That's another common way you can see a CMOS battery on a motherboard. All you would do is, is unplug it from the port. Don't pull on the wire. Just put your fingernails on either side of that thing and slide it out. A little at a time, wiggle it out, and then you've unplugged it. So that's a BIOS reset. Leave that unplugged for a while, and then just plug it back in. If you have this other kind of CMOS battery here, uh, the way to get this out, there's a spring here that holds it in and a spring underneath here that pushes it up. So we're gonna to wanna to push this battery back and up. Be very careful though, because this right here is very breakable. If that plastic part snaps off, then your battery won't be secure. So just be very careful, push in and up, like that. And it comes out like that. And then again, you would leave it out for a time, and then you would slide it back in and snap it back down into place. So those are the three tests I'm gonna show you how to run on a dead computer in this video. There's some of the easiest and some of the most common reasons why a computer is not starting that I find in my shop. Keep in mind, you may have to try these steps multiple times in order to see results in some of your cases, especially I'm talking about the power drain procedure. You may have to try it two, maybe three times to see a result in some computers. However, if you're still not seeing any new signs of life after these steps, you're probably looking at a little heavier problem with your computer than what we've gone over. You're probably looking at a weird BIOS issue, a motherboard issue, a motherboard component issue, maybe like a power jack or something being bad. Um, I'll go more in depth into other causes, other troubleshooting steps in my next video dealing with this problem.
Thanks so much for watching the video guys. As mentioned before, please remember to like and share if it helped you out. If you think it can help someone else out, feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this. And if you want to support the channel a little further by leaving a tip, it's very appreciated. Thank you so much for watching again. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.